with Miles isn't in an episode, we still talk about what he's doing in prison, mm-hmm. even if not on screen, just because mm-hmm. it may not be relevant to the characters in that moment, but it's relevant to the audience and, this, and the larger story. But also, like, we know everybody wants David, so we're going we to tease that out. <laughs> you think we're just going to give you what you want? No, it's going to wait. <laughs> Raphael, how are you? I'm great. You know, I love Screen Rant and this background is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I love blind spotting and this episode in particular was fantastic. That, episode <laughs> that is an absurd yeah. episode. <laughs> so when blind spotting first came into being, I know first off, I know you and, and David worked on it for a billion years before it actually became a film. But when it did become a film, did you expect to still be writing it? In 2023? No, and I think part of the reason it is a show is because it's not the movie. You know, it's mm-hmm. not it's not the same two characters and their interaction. I think for us, the movie was the best moment to drop into those two characters' friendship. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so when we were thinking about the show, it really was like, well, what's if we were going to drop back into the world of our version of the Bay, um, who do we want to see and what's the story that would make sense? And so it really was... You know, it's it's a bonus that you kind of already know who Miles is and you've seen who Ashley is a bit. You know, the, the movie has the great moment around the gun and around their family mm. with Sean, but that's kind of all you get about their relationship. And so it felt like the only natural spinoff. It's like, well, what other family dynamic did we sort of fall in love with? And a lot of people in the interviews would be like the gun scene with the kid and the, the parents and them talking about it and them the wrapping the hand and them getting into the argument and him apologizing. We're like, yeah. We love them too, you know? So yeah. let's see more of their their love life and let's see mm-hmm. it, you know? And I think we were also talking a lot about wanting to write a show that is about like love enduring something terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm happy to be on a second season now where we get to keep, you know, keep doing that. And also they're mm-hmm. not, you know, you've watched a little bit of season two. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was going to say, we got the beautiful, you know, moment of them getting married last season. And of course, that's not the cure-all. No. We get to see what a conjugal, conjugal visit looks like and the problems that that might even lead to. Can you talk about continuing to build that dynamic with Jasmine and that storytelling with Sean? Yeah. I mean, the great thing about working with Jasmine is she always wants to go there. You know, mm-hmm. if I come to her with an idea and I go, I think this would be really interesting to tackle. She's like, yeah, I think that would be you and I would have a blast in that scene together. And so mm-hmm. like a lot of our conversations are both writer conversations and actor conversations, mm-hmm. um, which is really great to be able to have those simultaneously. She is a producer on the show as well. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of it is then also sitting with our amazing, you know, writers from this season and going, what are the things that have to happen? You know, nine months mm-hmm. later, we need the conjugal visit. We need the weekend visitation at San Quentin. It has to happen. It has to be a mm-hmm. big part of their life because it's the lifeline. It's the hope. You know, and then we're like, oh, well, that has to both be about Ashley, but there's a seven-year-old. Mm-hmm. We got to talk about how he's going to deal with that and how that's going to affect his life. And also a seven-year-old is starting to do like seven-year-old boys, not all, but some are hitting that, like, I kind of want to get away from my mom phase. Mm-hmm. Um, like, what does that look like when dad's not around? How does she deal with that when she kind of is clinging to him the most? Mm-hmm. Um, and then we would talk to a lot of mothers of you know, families who have incarcerated loved ones and, mm. and that like, I need to do it all myself and I'm not being any fun, but I'm holding it down. And, and, and there's people on both of our, a lot of our families who are single moms. And there's a lot of that mentality of like, I don't have my personal life, but, but I do it all for my kid. And mm. a lot of them going to those people and going, but like, don't you want a day off? Don't you want to do something? And right. those, there's all these different things that became thematic um, uh, tent poles for us in season two. Also in that episode, I really loved how they tell Sean about slavery, right? Like, and that, um, and that makes me wonder, how do you decide which moments will be, you know, like visualized differently or will be breaking the fourth wall, et cetera? I think every one of the EPs probably has a slightly different rule Mm -hmm. for me. And I think I probably get to bully everyone with my rules because I'm a sharper, <laughs> but um, my my rules and my conventions are are mm-hmm. this. Um, movement, dance is, um, is s- similar. It's not like m- musical theater in any other sense, except that mm-hmm. musical theater goes to song when words fail. So dance first is about our words failing. Mm-hmm. And then the big rule about dance is when the effects, when the weight, of the prison industrial complex is being felt on the characters. That's when movement starts. They're a, they're a, 
They're an extension of the arm of that system affecting the lives of these people. And so that episode you're talking about where like, you know, a, 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 a biracial black woman and a white dude have to tell their son about that word. It is a, it is a, oftentimes an, there's a necessity for language and a language list conversation. Cause it's about, it's about feelings. It's about history. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a bit over his head. Mm-hmm. And so we had this initial idea of like, well, what if we, instead of us trying to write it, cause we don't have the time <laughs> to write how long they would be talking, yeah. you know, can we symbolize it through movement? And luckily we have Buck and Bugs, our choreographers to come in and really put that together. Um, and then of course that's Jess Wu Calder's directorial debut episode. And so she had oh, to take that on the most. Yeah. Um, and she had this amazing vision for it that we were like, all right, well then you go work with Bugs and figure out how you want to do it. Um, mm-hmm. And David and I were writing the episode up until that point. We really just mm-hmm. wrote like, and then there's a dance piece that explains this word. <laughs> and, then, and then we handed it to Jess and she went yeah. on the thing. Um, and then, but then verse is, um, for me is, um, whenever I feel like Ashley can't explain it to Sean in her own words, mm-hmm. I think that she writes a poem down for him to read later. Mm-hmm. And we're just hearing the poem now. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. Um, you are going to be in Loki or you have already been. And for me, you will be in season two. Why can you tell me about that experience? I cannot even <laughs> confirm or deny this. <laughs> um, but that's a cool show. And if I was on it, it would be so awesome. I'll bet Tom Hiddleston is the best. Mm, and then I bet Old that's Wilson true. Seems like a really awesome guy. <laughs> um, and that all that cast and crew, I'll bet, are fantastic <laughs> to work with. And so I'm really excited to see what season two uh, has. Because you and me both, you and me both. (laughs) Finally, I love that you still get to work with David on this project, even though he is not physically present on screen. But do you guys talk about like, what is Colin up to? Is he visiting Miles? What's happening? Yeah, yeah. There's like always a line item on the on the board that's like, and where's Colin and all this? Because we don't want to lose sight of him. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the the fascinating thing about David not being in the show is that he's in the writer's room and he's on set. Right. You know, he's actually really present to everyone involved mm-hmm. in the show, except the audience. <laughs> he's like, you know, and, and he's represented by his mother and his sister. Mm-hmm. So a lot of David not being in the show is about him and I finding clever ways to kind of clear space for the other characters. Mm. You know, if and when the time is right for for, you know, them to sort of re-enter the, the fold, that's what'll happen. Um, mm. And we're, there's, it's always open to it where every episode we're like, and where's Colin now? And where's, with Miles isn't in an episode, we still talk about what he's doing in prison, mm-hmm. even if it's not on screen, just because mm-hmm. it may not be relevant to the characters in that moment, but it's relevant to the audience and, this, and the larger story. Mm-hmm. But also like, we know everybody wants David, so we don't, we don't tease that out. <laughs> You think we're just going to give you what you want? No, just gotta wait. <laughs> we're going to keep dropping little hints that David's going to pop up. I want every time a camera goes around a corner, people are like, David? <laughs> it's so great. It's so fun to mess with people. Yeah, um, That is truly Machiavelli- Machiavellian of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> just right. You know, he just might. Hey, it's eight episodes of a season. He was around. Mm-hmm. He might pop up. You never know. Well, thank you so much. Uh, You have done amazing work. I cannot wait to see the rest of the season, the last few episodes that I have not watched yet. And then, of course, whatever may or may not happen in Loki. Well, I uh, I love Screen Rant. Thank you so much. (laughs) And uh, I hope I keep popping up on that website. (laughs) I hope you do, too. (laughs) Bye.